Hi, welcome to SIBO Digital TV. I'm Matt Scharf, Director of Business Development here in Chicago, and I'm with my guest, Hadley Yost. Please, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Hadley Yost. I'm in Business Development at DriveWell. Thanks so much for having me. Happy to have you. It's wonderful you're here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the digital landscape, but in particular what DriveWell does. But before we get there, please tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my background is largely in EFX sales. So I was at a company called ICAP, which was the largest interdealer, broker dealer at the time, and then went over to a startup and that was successfully sold to the Singapore Exchange. And then I sort of thought, what is the next thing that I wanted to do? And I got into the world of crypto in 2021, joining a company called Genesis Trading, which was a crypto native company. And now I have sort of married both those worlds and I am in business development at DriveWealth. And what drew you into the crypto side of things? What was the attraction to that piece of the business? Yeah, I think being an EFX, which was the oldest, largest, most saturated market that there was, <laughs> um, I sort of felt like I missed the technical revolution um, when electronic trading started there. And I had this unique opportunity to get into a transformative market with crypto. And so I just thought this is, you know, a once in a lifetime opportunity and I haven't looked back. That's great. <laughs> so uh, tell me what Drive Wealth's uh, goals are and who their target audience is. Yeah, so Drive Wealth partners with businesses to power their investing experiences. So what that means is that we partner with businesses that want to offer investing through mobile apps and online platforms. And basically, we are the invisible layer that's offering trade execution all the way through books, records, and tax reporting. So if we do our job well, then the end user for that business will never know that we're there. And likely, if you've ever bought $5 of Apple stock or $50 of Tesla or $1 of Bitcoin, you've done it through a partner like Drive Wealth. So is the crypto aspect of Drive Wealth a new uh, market for, for the company being 10 years old? I imagine you've already done it with the equity side. The crypto side is recently added to the uh, offering. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So we essentially went out to our partners and we said, what are you looking for from us? And overwhelmingly, the answer was crypto. So uh, I think it was 85% of our partners said that they were looking to add a spot Bitcoin offering. And so that seemed like an easy partnership for us and we wanted to give them what they wanted and that's why we ended up partnering with SIBO Digital. Wow. That's great. Well, we're glad to have you. Welcome. And also, to what do you see yourself uh, expanding within the crypto market? Do you see yourself going into uh, coins beyond Bitcoin and other offerings in crypto assets? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all looking for some regulatory clarity and there's sort of been a flight to quality in this market. So right now we feel really confident that spot Bitcoin is the correct offering for us, but certainly we would love to add more as our partners are wanting that from us and as the market is maturing. That's great. I think you're in the right place. <laughs> uh, I think we see the market the same way. It does need some regulatory clarity and we are eager to get it and eager to work within the parameters of it. So it'll be a good partnership. Yeah. Um, what do you think uh, are, the, are the downsides to this, uh, you know, entering this space? Are there any risks that you're kind of monitoring as you go forward? Um, I don't think that we find that there's any downsides, especially in partnering with SIBO. Um, we really wanted to partner with someone that had the background in TradFi that was proven, tested, was, you know, as we said, the most regulatorily compliant. Um, and we felt very confident in that and that we could offer best execution. If anything, I'd say we're more excited because our partners are really global and we're really eager to bring an easy product and, and more accessibility for crypto into global markets. Right. So I, I was going to ask about that. What is your space in terms of uh, global reach? Is it uh, North America, South America? Where are you looking and where are you, uh, where are you having success? So essentially because our bread and butter product is fractionalized U.S. equities, um, that is something, a, a technology that we actually pioneered and, and now has become commonplace in the U.S. But you think about other markets and 
they are not able to buy $5 of Tesla at any time whenever they want. And so when we partner with these international broker dealers, we're bringing this ability for people to get access to wealth generation through US markets. Similarly, we're doing that with crypto, and I think that that means that our partners generally tend to be overseas. Mm -hmm. So right now, we're adding partners for crypto in Turkey, in Brazil, in Canada, and we're super excited about it. That's great. Uh, that's, that sounds, it sounds promising. I think you made a great decision. I think uh, there's another question we're going to ask is, what do you foresee in the next 6 to 12 months? For crypto, and maybe even in five years, what's your what's your take? I know we're both kind of new at this, but uh, <laughs> what what do you think about uh, what's going to happen over time? I think um, obviously we're all sort of excited by the prospect of there being an approved spot Bitcoin ETF and what that will do to this market. So I think we're all sort of waiting for that. And I think obviously what just occurred with Ripple is pretty interesting and will sort of shape what is deemed a security and what isn't. And I think, if anything, it's just furthering the conversation and proving that there has to be decisions one way or another. And um, that will bring more market participants, both retail and institutional, into the market. So Hadley, Cebo Digital and DriveWealth have a partnership. We're very proud of that. Um, where do you see yourselves fitting in the crypto landscape um, with other partners, but also across the globe? Yeah, so it's sort of interesting. DriveWealth sort of sits in the middle of the crypto landscape because we are in between our partners who are the businesses that are passing down execution, whether it's retail or institutional investing. And then we are in between Cebo Digital, which is the execution partner for our crypto trading. So we see ourselves as sort of the bridge and being part of that process of easing execution for people and, you know, adding access. So customer base, right? Um, who is it? Where are they? And why are they leveraging drive wealth? Yeah. So our customer is, if you think about the largest investing apps, that's who our customer is. And what we're doing with them is we're offering them fractionalized U.S. equities. So we actually pioneered the technology of our fracker. And so what that means is if you've ever bought $5 of Tesla or $50 of Google, or you've ever had a credit card where it had a roundup offering, that is done through a partner like DriveWealth if it wasn't DriveWealth. Mm. Um, and ultimately what our mission is, is to democratize access to global markets, especially the US. We have 25 seats of the floor on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And you know, if you're in the US, you think it's easy to go in and buy $50 of Tesla whenever you want. But if you're in Saudi Arabia, that may not be the case. If you're in um, Latin America, that may not be the case. And so we partner with fintechs all over the world, and we're allowing people access to wealth generation through US equities and now through crypto. That's great. And the horizon for drive wealth seems pretty broad given the access across the world to smaller um, consumers. What else do you see or foresee, I should say, drive wealth providing as time goes on? Yeah, so right now we're super excited to be partnering with you to launch our spot Bitcoin offering. I think definitely we will add more to that as retail demand grows and as institutional demand grows. Um, on the traditional side, we have just launched options and that's huge for us and opens up, you know, tons of new markets. Yeah. And, uh, you know, before we started, we talked about Ripple a bit and how the, the lawsuit um, or the judgment came down saying traded on an exchange, green light, traded as a, as a security, not so much. Um, how do you feel about that as a tailwind or a headwind um, for our partnership together that seemed very promising? Uh, what would your take on that uh, decision be? I think our take is just that any regulatory clarity is good. Obviously, you know, I think that the crypto world sort of took that as a win. Mm. Um, for us, we were always just going to be playing in the Bitcoin sandbox for now. So um, we just took it more as 
great that there was any kind of judgment that could lead to regulatory clarity because that's what people are wanting and that is what will ultimately bring in more investors and more market participants. Sure. And then a uh, crazy question. Let's go two to five years out. Uh, Drive Wealth is still cooking and, and providing services across the world. What is the grand or the best uh, outcome you can see for yourself and the, the company in those terms, in those time terms? Yeah, so there's a ton of different use cases for Drive Wealth, and I think that the ultimate goal, like I said, is to democratize access to global markets. And I'm hoping that we will continue to build, we will continue to be a pioneering fintech and adding more products and adding more partners in tons of different areas. Um, you know, we've sort of spoken about how we partner with fintechs and investing apps and retail, but we also do robo advisory. We're also working on, you know, different products for corporates. So I think um, just continuing to build and, you know, growing our presence in the crypto native world as well. That's great. It sounds like you worked here before, the way you were talking. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think we have the same plans. Yeah. You know, we want to expand into other spaces that uh, some will be innovative, some will be, you know, we're an option shop at yeah. heart. That will be next. So um, I'm glad you're with us, and I'm glad that we uh, will be traveling the road together. It sounds like it's going to be a great partnership. Yeah, I definitely think that we created this partnership because we had such a similar vision and you have such a proven track record in TradFi, as do we. And we are just building our our business in crypto one one trade at a time. Yeah, and I think there's nothing more global than crypto. Yeah. So uh, looking forward to working with you moving forward. Yeah. That's great. So six, 12 months out, uh, what do you see as happening in the uh, financial world, but more importantly, in the crypto world? Uh, that would be a headwind or a tailwind for uh, markets? I think um, if a spot Bitcoin ETF does get approved, that will be pretty transformative for this market and add a lot of confidence and new market participants. So I'm sort of staying tuned for that. Well, thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure talking to you and sharing the information. Uh, I want to thank uh, people for spending the time with us, and I hope it was enjoyable and useful. And please come back and check out more SIBO Digital TV next time around. Thanks.